What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I will be showing you some books that I've read this year. It's really important to take care of your mental health and be able to create and produce art in a way that is healthy and productive and motivating and from a place of positivity. So these books have really come in handy with that intention in mind and I've learned so many things from these books and without further ado I'm going to introduce them one by one and talk a little bit about why I like it. Let's get started! Art and Fear, Observations on the Perils and Rewards of Art Making. I'm gonna start out with this book because this is the book that I think all artists of any sort should read. This is basically the book that says, I hear you, I hear what you're going through, and you just gotta keep on going and keep persevering and you will eventually hit all of your art goals. Making art is such a vulnerable and such a scary practice, but we still engage in it anyways. This book really kind of guides you through like every stage of just making art and just the art process and the fears and the tribulations that would arise and come it really makes you feel heard and it really makes you feel like yes that's exactly how i feel and it feels really nice and good to have someone else understand this and be able to vocalize it in such a clear and con concise way if you're ever unsure about your art or feeling really unmotivated about your art i encourage you to just pick up this book and leaf through it and gain some inspiration the moment of completion is also inevitable a moment of loss. The loss of all other forms the imagined peace might have taken. Art and Fear, highly highly recommend. Let us move on to the next book. I will be diving into the realm of productivity now. These two books I found were very very useful in understanding habits and how I can apply it into my own life in order to be a more productive artist. So I'm gonna start with this one which probably Everybody and their mothers have read Atomic Habits by James Clear. What I like about this book is that it is very easy to understand and it has a very, very clear instructions guideline in how you can use habits in your favor, how you can build good habits and how to break bad habits. It is so clear and so spelled out for you that you really, like if you followed this book to a T, there really isn't any reason for you to not be able to break bad habits or build good habits. So this right here is basically the guide that the book revolves around, which is a, just a very simple step process in order to break bad habits and build good habits and each chapter kind of goes more in depth about how you could do each. If you're ever kind of unmotivated or you're looking to switch up your life, build some good habits, or you're feeling really unmotivated about the progress you're making, really really useful to read this book and get some more motivation. So here are some excerpts that I found very very useful. Goals create an either or conflict. Either you achieve your goal and are successful or you fail and you are a disappointment. You mentally box yourself into a narrow version of happiness. When you fall in love with the process rather than the product, you don't have to wait to give yourself permission to be happy. So yeah. I've also provided this book to kind of um, contrast or compare with Atomic Habits because I know everyone's been talking about Atomic Habits, but um, not many people have been talking about this book, which is Good Habits, Bad Habits. Some personal context on this book. This book was actually written by my professor, um, Wendy Wood, who I worked and interned under my senior year of college. Yes, I did graduate with a psychology degree at USC. It is hard to imagine because now I work as a comics producer. So yeah, I did a lot of labs in college and I did work with a lot of professors regarding psychology and this was one of the professors that I worked with. If you really really want to understand the psychology behind habits and why habits happen and why they form, you should definitely read this book because every single experiment and trial that Professor Wood mentions illuminates so much about just how habit works and how you could trick your mind into doing certain things. Did you guys know that we spend 43% of our day doing things without thinking about them? So we're spending 43% almost half of our day through automation, through habit, and these habits and this automation is what builds up our identity. It is very 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 hard to activate our prefrontal cortex and to activate all parts of our brain in order to make every single small decision in life. Obviously we save these for the most important decisions that we have to make in the day such as you know making decisions for work. By reading this book you could maybe understand habits better and be able to separate your habits from yourself so that you won't necessarily beat yourself up 
over a certain thing that you did and you're more smarter about how you set up your habits and how you build new habits. So she actually did a study where she tested how long it takes for you to form a habit. It actually varies depending on whatever kind of habit you're trying to adapt, which makes a lot of sense. For eating something healthy, participants had to repeat the action for about 65 days before they did it mostly without thinking. Having a healthy drink took slightly less repetition, some 59 days. Exercise, however, required more than 91 days of repeated action to become largely habitual. Isn't that cool? These are all like statistical data. So now you know. So my next book focuses on being just a woman in society, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. I'm sure you guys have seen it around. Glennon Doyle talks about her experiences trying to fit into the mold to become that perfect, perfect girl and how she ended up finding a way to just embrace her true self and live her happiest life. It shows the struggle of wanting to be good for other people, wanting to fit the mold, wanting to be a good daughter, a good mom, a good student, you know, whatever it is. She talked about a story where her kids were watching a movie with some friends in the basement and so she came down and asked them, hey, do you guys want anything to eat? The reaction between the boys and the girls were completely different. So the boys didn't even look away from the screen, they reacted very quickly and they just said, yes, I'm hungry, you know, whatever. But the girls, on the other hand, they stopped, they looked at each other, they assessed the situation. One girl spoke up to the mom, she looked at her in the eye and said, no thank you, we're good. So yeah, just through that one interaction alone, you can really see how differently girls and boys are raised. And because of that, girls tend to really be very conscious about how others perceive them and the role they should be playing in society. And this book teaches people to be brave and to live your realest truth. And don't be afraid to be vulnerable, be brave and it's okay to be different. I'm gonna read a little um, passage. Maybe Eve was never meant to be our warning. Maybe she was meant to be our model. Own your wanting, eat the apple, and let it burn. So good. So moving on, I'm going to talk about some books that have helped with my mental health. As I mentioned before, um, the beginning of 2020, Two, I started out at a really, really, really low point. There are just so many things about myself that I disliked that was really coming to the surface and really demanding so much attention. So the first book that I picked up was actually this book right here, Meeting the Shadow. So it's just basically a bunch of excerpts from psychologists and philosophers about just the concept of the shadow and how it impacts your daily life. If you guys know Carl Jung, or if you guys listen to BTS and know about Carl Jung through BTS, thank you RM. So you basically got the persona and then the persona is actually made up of two parts, which is the ego and the shadow. And in between that, in between the ego and the shadow, the part that meshes together is the self. And that is you. You are both your ego and you are both your shadow. We learn to reject certain parts of ourselves that don't fit with this ideal version that society accepts. And so we take all these parts of ourselves and then we put it away and we hide it and all of these things then become our shadow. If you don't confront your shadow, it will always be there demanding attention. If you constantly reject your shadow and you know allow your ego to take hold, you will constantly be at war with yourself. For me, it helped kickstart my own like mental health journey. I became aware of my shadows. I was able to practice ways to heal those parts of my shadow. Obviously, we all want to be at peace with ourselves. Our ego and our shadow want to be in harmony. That way we can be able to pursue things and do the things we want to do in a way that makes us happy and makes us at peace and makes us feel satisfied. Last but not least is my final book. This is a book that I recommend to read after you have read Meeting the Shadow because now that you've met your shadow, it is time to love it. <laughs> so here's all about love. <laughs> the best part about this book is it really encourages you to think about the love that you received growing up. Obviously, we all want to operate from a place of love and not from fear. You want to love yourself, you want to love others, you want to love your craft, you want to love what you do. It really dives into and helps you reflect on what your attitude and thoughts are on love what your love was like growing up and just how you can incorporate more love into your life. I think it really helped, at least for me, to kickstart and understand the concept of love even more and how I can slowly tiptoe my way into perhaps being more loving towards myself, towards others, all of these kinds of things. The part that really struck out to me that I feel like is a very good way to encompass this book 
is how she defines love itself. It is a very holistic, just all-encompassing way to describe love. So yeah, she sees love as the will to nurture one's own or another's spiritual growth, revealed through acts of care, respect, knowing, and assuming responsibility. It is not just like the lovey-dovey kind of love we see in like movies or TV shows. It is so much deeper than that and it's a foundation of how we can go about our daily lives and treat others and treat ourselves. With that, I have concluded all of my book recommendations. I feel like as artists, we're all sensitive souls. So I think a lot about making art and being an artist is about wanting to share our own story and wanting to feel connected and express ourselves and be vulnerable. And so a lot of these things have to do with our mental health and our psychology and a lot of this takes bravery and a lot of this takes a lot of work on ourselves um, through our shadow, understanding our shadow, understanding how we can be more loving towards ourselves and so I think it's really important especially for artists to take care of our mental health and improve our mental health by incorporating good habits into our lives and have resources to help motivate us in our artistic journey. If you guys have any book recommendations feel free to drop them in the comments. I love looking into any books of these sorts. So yeah, happy reading, happy creating. If you really like this video, please, please subscribe. I hope to give you all of the motivational resources that I can on my channel and just motivate you to be a better artist and a better creator. So yeah, without further ado, I will see you guys in the next video. Yeah, that's all. Bye!